Hello, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through fun song, exciting activities, and different Bible stories every Sabbath. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you kids to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program. And if you are regular, guys, it's been about nine months since we've been doing this, and here we are. Welcome back. Always good to have you guys here with us. Today, we're going to be talking about love. Whoa, it's Christmas. Love is in the air. Everyone is loving each other. Everyone is buying gifts. Everyone is receiving gifts. We are showing people that we love them through our actions. So today, we're going to be celebrating this special love that is in the air. Now, we want to welcome all the moms, dads, boys, uh, grown-ups that are watching with us. And if you uh, want to be a part of our Kids Connection program, and if you want to help out, give us a call. Let us know. Hey, listen, Mr. Zork, I want to help out. What can I do to help the Kids Connection program? We have some nice volunteers that are helping on every week, and we would love to use your talents to, in, to enhance our program and make it even better. So let me know if you want to be a part of this, and we'll be happy to have you in our team. So our email address is VD for Vallejo Drive, Kids Connection at gmail.com. Very soon, we are going to be changing our email address. I'm going to be notifying all the boys and girls that we have a new email address so we can communicate with you, okay? So that will be coming up on the first couple weeks of January. Be on the lookout for that, new ways of communication. But today, I'm very happy because this week is Christmas week. Yes, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus. And I'm so excited with our background here. I also want to take this opportunity and thank Mr. Alex Britton because he helped me put this background together and put it up the week before. And I'm so happy that we got to do this. And I can't wait for us to celebrate Kids Connection in here in Kids Connection so we can all watch, so we can all see this in person right here in Kids Connection. Kids, it is so nice to have you here. I love being a part, and I love that you guys are, are coming and watching our program every week. If this is your first time, or if, if you are joining us for the first time, send us a note. Let us know where you are participating, where you are watching us from. We would love to say hello, to give a shout out to you um, in the air. Speaking of shout outs, this week, we just had a birthday last week, and we're gonna have another birthday coming up this week now. Mom got a hold of me, and I'll tell you who had a birthday this past week and who's going to have a birthday this coming week. So stick around until the end of the Kids Connection program. We're going to celebrate not only this birthday, but other birthdays as well. So kids, with no further ado, welcome to Kids Connection. We're going to sing our song of the day today together now, which is love. Many of you already know the song, but if you don't know, it's very easy. It repeats itself over and over again. So very easy to remember. And don't forget, our song of the week is on the bottom of our website, graceandconditional.com forward slash Kids Connection. Let's sing our song of the day today.
well, that was a fun song. I remember singing the song since when I was your age. Yes, I used to sing the song with my family and with my friends at church. And now I get to sing it with you guys. And hopefully you get to sing the same song with mom and dad and see if you guys can do that uh, two parts singing along, okay? So try that with mom and dad or with a grown up uh, later this week. Now I'm gonna invite you boys and girls to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, Thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you because you love us, because you give your son um, to, to be born for us as, as you show your love to us. Help us to learn more about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wonderful kids, now we come to a part of the program where we get to learn about our missionary story from other places of the world. Let's watch our missionary story together. When Sarah's husband left her four years ago, she knew she had to find a way to support herself, but she didn't know where to look for a job. She prayed for direction, and God impressed her to share His Word with the people living around her. Sarah began visiting her neighbors and their homes. I prayed for the sick, and they got well. I prayed for those who had evil spirits, and the spirits went away. I prayed for those who couldn't have children, and they were able to start a family. Some people were happy when Sarah visited them, but others didn't like it. One day, Sarah visited a family who was worshiping an idol. They demanded that she worship with them, but she refused. One young woman angrily plunged Sarah's hand into a pot of boiling oil. I prayed, and when I removed my hand from the oil, it wasn't burned at all. The next day, the young woman's father called Sarah to apologize. He asked her to pray for his family. Sarah was happy to uplift this family in prayer. Now they are changed. They have accepted God and they worship with us. Five families witnessed Sarah escape serious injury that day. They were amazed and they too have asked her to pray for them. When the local Adventist pastor learned about Sarah's miraculous experience, he told her, you need to work for God. He offered her a position as a global mission pioneer, and Sarah eagerly accepted it. Four years later, she still visits families in her community. She prays with them and shares literature about Jesus. On Sabbaths, she invites a group of women to worship in her home. Every Wednesday, she hosts a Bible study. There are many widows and orphans in her city and Sarah does all she can to meet their spiritual and physical needs. She often buys the women saris, or food for their families. As a pioneer, it's not only about prayer or just going to their houses. If I have extra clothes, I want to clothe them. If they need food, I will feed them. It's my duty. Sarah is no longer sad that her husband abandoned her. After he left, God has given me more strength so that I can preach the gospel and tell people that he is coming soon. He is taking care of me. Sarah asks you to pray for the people of her city. I want them to be ready for the second coming. I also want to appeal to everyone to be an example to others and serve them wholeheartedly. Sarah has found her greatest joy in being a global mission pioneer. I'm happy and I'm willing to serve God as long as I'm alive. Please pray for Sarah and all our global mission pioneers around the world who are sharing the good news of Jesus' love and soon return. It is so much fun when we get to learn about other places of the world where our offerings will go and help the missionaries to continue to spread the love of Jesus to others. So don't forget, click on the link above our video on our website and ask mom and dad to help the missionaries with your offerings. Thank you so much for your generosity and let's continue to pray for our missionaries as they continue to share the love of God in other places. Thank you. Now kids, today, since we're talking about love, wow, 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 love is awesome. I love talking about love. Do you like love? What is love for you? How do you understand what love is? Love is this feeling that we have inside, right? And that 
mom and dad loves me, that aunts and uncles, grandpas and grandmas, uh, the uh, my neighbors, my friends, my siblings, my dog, my birds, my cats, oh, my hamster, what other animals do you guys have at home? We show love to other people and we feel that love inside. I love you guys. Do you feel that I love you? How do you know that I love you, boys and girls? How do you know that the teachers love you? How do you know that your church loves you? How do you know that the grown-ups in your life loves you? How do you know that? Well, I was searching for love on the internet and I came across so many videos about love. But I want to show you something. It's a way that people show that they love others. So now I'm going to invite you guys to stick around, sit back, relax, and let's watch some videos of people showing that they love others in different ways. Let's watch this video. A viral dash cam video out of Wisconsin caught a police officer's unexpected response to a student's excuse for his speeding. The kid tells the officer he's late for an important presentation in class and was only speeding because he'd had to stop by the house of a buddy who knew how to tie a tie. Unfortunately, as we can see, the buddy wasn't home, and the poor kid remains tieless. The officer takes the kid's tie and asks him to get together his license, insurance, and registration while tying it around his own neck. The officer counsels the student that one of his insurance cards is expired, then notices that the tie is too short. He'll have to do it again. The second attempt is a little long, but it'll have to do. He sends the student on his way with enough time to get to his presentation and a newfound appreciation for police officers. When the Oakland Cougars and Logan Township Lions met for a game of youth football in 2013, the Cougars coach brought out a trick play he had been working on for some time. In fact, he had collaborated on it with the head coach of the other team. This might sound a bit unusual, but the whole plan revolved around a very unusual and very determined player. Ten-year-old Jacob Steiner was a special needs student that had been taken under the wing of the coach and the entire football team. He had been playing in games all season long, but on this play you could see that the opposing players, with as much subtlety as they could muster, all allow themselves to be blocked, run the wrong way, or just fall down without being touched. All to make sure Jacob could know what it feels like to score a touchdown in a game, an experience he will certainly never forget. Greenville, South Carolina grocery store employee Brandon Rollins was going about a day like any other when he saw an opportunity to help. A frail, elderly customer half his size was making her way into the parking lot, and Brandon went out of his way to make sure she got where she was going safely. He took her by the hand and walked alongside her, not knowing that a customer was watching and shooting heartwarming video. Bo Graff posted his video to Facebook, where it quickly went viral and earned Brandon a spot on the local evening news. Bo told reporters that he had approached Brandon after witnessing his gesture of kindness to let him know how much it was appreciated, but that the kid had acted like it was simply no big deal, which as Bo pointed out is really the kind of attitude that the world needs to see. His Facebook post concluded, this is what America should be, and hopefully this is the America of tomorrow. Employees at the Qdoba restaurant in Louisville, Kentucky take pride in going out of their way for their customers. Among their many regulars is a woman that employee Ridge Quarles describes as a very nice lady with disabilities who isn't able to get out of the house very often but loves to eat at her neighborhood Qdoba when she can. Employees know her order by heart, but one day when she was having a particularly tough time, she had an unusual request for Ridge. After placing her regular order, she asked Ridge if he might be able to help feed her, and the young man didn't think twice before agreeing. Several other customers noticed the exchange, and one shot some video, which he shared to social media. The big-hearted gesture brought local news to the friendly restaurant, but Ridge insists that he was only doing what anyone else would have done. U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Robert Riston was out for a bite at a local Taco Bell in Alabama when his opportunity to make someone's day a little brighter presented itself. He was approached by a couple of boys who were selling homemade baked goods to raise money for their family. When Robert asked the older boy, only nine years old, if he had eaten anything that night, he answered no. But Robert didn't have any cash on him and the youngsters weren't in a position to take credit cards. So Robert brought both boys up to the counter and let them get anything they wanted to eat on him. 
The video was captured by a customer, who decided that the heartwarming moment needed to be shared with friends. After going viral, Robert was interviewed by local news, telling them that the boys were just as much of an inspiration to him as he could ever be to them. He also mentioned that they thanked him not just for the meal, but for watching over and protecting them in his role as a soldier. Los Lunas, New Mexico police officer Mark Garule responded to a call in late 2015 of a man laying up against a rock in the middle of a parking lot with no shoes or socks. When he contacted the man, he found his soaking wet socks drying nearby and old shoes that were full of holes. Officer Garule could have given the man a hard time for camping in a public place, but his body cam revealed that he chose a different course of action. After making sure the man wasn't in medical distress and had eaten earlier in the day, the officer went to a nearby Big Five sporting goods store and came out of his own pocket to buy the man a new pair of shoes with warm winter socks. Officer Garule told the man, whose name was also Mark, that Big Five had hooked him up, implying that he hadn't actually bought the stuff himself. And as if this weren't enough, he couldn't leave without giving Mark 20 bucks to make sure he wouldn't go hungry that night. Officer Garule is one cop who truly embodies the phrase to protect and serve. In 2014, a man boarding a commuter train in Perth, Australia almost lived out every commuter's worst nightmare. As he was getting on board the busy train, he lingered a bit too long, and just as the doors were closing, he slipped, getting his leg caught in the gap between the train and the platform. Quick-thinking transit officials alerted the conductor, making sure the train stayed put, but were unsure how to go about freeing the man. Fortunately for him, the car was loaded with compassionate passengers. Once everybody was evacuated from the car, transit workers organized a group effort by the huge crowd. They piled up against the side of the car and pushed, slowly rocking the car back until the gap widened enough for the man to be freed. The extraordinary effort was caught by surveillance video. A transit spokesman said the occurrence was simply an accident and not the result of overcrowding, and praised the actions of transit staff and all of the passengers who saved the man from potentially serious injury. When 23-year-old New Yorker Joey Resto noticed a shirtless homeless man sitting on his subway car, he had the opposite reaction from everyone else on the car. The guy was clearly not in his right mind and didn't smell so great, and all the other passengers were crowded at the other end of the car, as far away from the man as possible. But Joey saw a guy who was cold and disoriented on a New York winter night, and decided that the only humane thing to do was to literally give him the shirt off his back. The man was so weak that he needed help putting it on, which Joey did before also giving him his hat. Another writer got video of the incident and posted it to Facebook, where it quickly racked up an astounding 8 million views. Joey would later say that he offered to get the man something to eat as well, but that after receiving some warm clothes he had promptly fallen asleep. Employees of a Vancouver, Washington donut shop could tell that something was wrong with one of their drive through customers one morning in early 2016. The unidentified woman was visibly upset, and when one young employee asked if he could help, the woman confided that she had lost her 37-year-old husband just the previous night. The 19-year-old employee, Pierce Dunn, asked the woman if he could pray with her, which she said would help. Amazingly, several other employees dropped what they were doing and leaned out the drive through window to participate in an impromptu prayer circle. Of the group, only Dunn explicitly identified identifies as Christian, with another young man later telling reporters that he isn't religious at all, but just wanted to try to help someone who was obviously in need. A customer in line at the drive-thru snapped this photo, which garnered millions of views on Facebook. The general manager of the Dutch Bros franchise commented that these are just the kind of people the company hires, and that her employees do things like this all the time. This unbelievably touching incident just happened to be caught on camera, and the kids involved say that they just hope the picture going viral doesn't cause the woman any trouble. When 11-year-old Colorado Charter School student Delaney Clements was diagnosed with a rare form of childhood cancer, her 9-year-old best friend Cameron Renfro decided to show her support in a way most little girls wouldn't. Delaney was losing her hair due to chemotherapy, and Cameron decided to shave her head bald as a way of letting her friend know she wasn't alone. Did you guys like to watch the video? Did you see the many different ways that people are showing love to others? Did you see a police officer? Did you see someone praying with the other person over the window at a restaurant? Did you see people helping each other? There are many, many different ways that these people were showing love towards others. Do you think that people that received the love felt loved? Did you think 
that they felt like someone cared for them. There are many, many, many different videos and different um, uh, people showing love towards others on the internet. But I just wanted to share this with you to explain something to you guys today. Our lesson today, we're going to be learning and talking about love and how we show people that we love them through our words and our actions. The same way that these people showed a complete stranger that they cared for them, they loved them by praying with them, by helping them in a way that no one else did it. And they felt loved. They felt loved. In today's story, we're going to learn that the love from Jesus, how Jesus loved us, and how He wants us to love others, and how He wants us to show others that we love them. Jesus wants us to show Him that we love Him by helping others. Because when we do, when we are kind to other people, when we show our love to other people through our words and through our actions, it tells God how much we love Him. Now, God loves us and He wants to have a friendship with you. He wants you to love Him back. And what do we do when we love our friends? We do kind things for our friends. We send them Christmas gifts. We send them cards. We give them gifts. We call them. We talk to them. Isn't that how we show people that we love them? That we care for them? That's exactly what Jesus, what God wants from you. He wants you to be His friend and He wants you to tell Him everything. Kids, let's watch, let's watch our, our story for today at our teacher's classroom and we're going to learn that the gift that God gives us, the love that God gives us, we can reflect this love and we can show other people that we love them as well. But now we're going to sing our song of the day one more time, love, love, love. Let's close our program today with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this Kids Connection program where we learn a little bit about loving others. We ask that you be with all the boys and, boys and girls now as we listen to the story of the lesson from the teachers and as we learn more about love. Help us to love each other, love our neighbors the same way that you loved us and help us to love you and grow our friendship with you in love. Be with all the boys and girls now as we continue to worship your name. In Jesus' name I pray, 
Amen. Excellent, kids. Don't forget, let's love each other the same way that God loves us and show others that we love them too. Okay? Now, this week, hello, it is Christmas! Whoa, Christmas is finally here after so many months doing the program online. We are celebrating Christmas. It looks like it was just yesterday and we had our 2019 Christmas and here we are on 2020 Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, we have so many things happening at our church this weekend and I want to tell you all about it right now. Kids, we have this afternoon, we have a Christmas program of our church, Vallejo Drive choir and other singers and the pastors are going to be presenting a Christmas program today. Go to our website, graceandconditional.com. Right there on the homepage, they'll be able to watch the Christmas candlelight program this afternoon. It's a concert with nice Christmas music. You won't, you don't want to miss this. Gather gather some 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 hot chocolate or or tea or juice or whatever you drink, sit on the couch, relax, you and all the grown-ups at home because you will enjoy the program today. Now, this is happening today. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, we're going to have a church business meeting. Tell mom and dad, mom, dad, go to the business meeting because this is, we're going to be talking about some important things for our church tomorrow morning. It should be a quick meeting. It's just an end of the year meeting for all the grown-ups. But ask them to participate because it is important for them. Okay? Wonderful. Now, after the business meeting tomorrow, that happens at 10 o'clock in the morning, we will have in the afternoon a special program for you. Yes, you heard it right. Tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock, we will have our Christmas Kids Party happening on Zoom. If you go to our website, uh, graceunconditional.com forward slash Kids Connection, there's going to be instructions there on how all the kids can join us for a Christmas party tomorrow afternoon at 3. What is a Christmas party on Zoom? Well, we're going to have fun songs. We're going to have activities. We're going to have crafts. We're going to have, we're going to watch a movie together. And we're also going to have, sing some songs on Zoom. Yes, we're going to be singing songs. It's all going to be, it's all going to happen live. So you kids don't want to miss this. It happens tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Zoom. I hope to see you guys there. I'm going to be there. All the teachers are going to be there and all the kids are going to be there. It is going to be live on Zoom tomorrow. A lot of fun. Merry Christmas. Yes, we start the week of Christmas. And this week, kids, this week is Christmas. It is a lot of fun. What are you getting for Christmas? Are you, what do you think you're getting for Christmas? What are you giving for Christmas? Did you get mom and dad anything? Oh, I hope you did. If you didn't, there's still time. Talk to mom, talk to dad, talk to grandma, grandpa, uh, aunts, uncles, whoever you're with, and tell them, I want to get my grown-up something for Christmas. And hopefully, they'll like it. Well, I think I'm going to like what I'm getting, and I think my daughters are going to like what they're getting. Because this is the season where we get to celebrate Christmas, and we show others that we love them by giving them gifts, giving them hugs, giving, kissing them, and loving them smiling saying telling them how much we love them telling them how much we appreciate them thank them don't forget christmas is the season for us to show others that we love the same way that god gave us his son as a gift in, in on, on christmas uh, on, on the christmas day okay now earlier in the program i told you guys that mom somebody's mom contacted me this week and told me about a couple birthdays and yes right now i want to wish will a happy birthday will just had a birthday on the 14th this past week now will happy birthday will i hope you had a good birthday i hope you enjoyed with mom and dad and whoever you celebrated that with your birthday with at home happy birthday god bless you not only will but here comes another surprise will's sister mia she is having a birthday 
this coming week now on the 28th. Yes, so Mia, happy birthday too. God bless you. It's a, a house full of birthdays. And if it was your birthday this week or coming week now, I want to wish you guys a happy birthday too. Don't forget, mom and dad needs to send me a message letting you know, letting me know that it is your birthday so I can wish you a happy birthday too right here on Kids Connection. Okay? And if you guys didn't, if I missed your birthday some time ago it, because uh, I, uh, mom or dad or who I, uh, nobody sent me a message, it's okay. Tell them to send me a message. I will, I will say hello and happy birthday to you too. Okay? Kids, Merry Christmas. I hope you have fun, you be safe, and you have a lot of love in your life. Remember that I love you. And remember that this right here, God loved you. And he gave you his son to be born as a gift for you, for me, for us. So thank you, Jesus. And happy birthday, Jesus. Merry Christmas, kids. Until next week on another Kids Connection program. Bye-bye. Bye. Good morning, early teens, and welcome back to Sabbath School. I'm so glad that you could join me again. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, Sabbath day, and we ask, Lord, that you will be with us and that we, as we learn more about you, let the Holy Spirit be in our hearts. Amen. Our title for today, Love, the Greatest of All. This is still part of our Benefits of Belief New Testament unit. And here are the objectives today. To know that Paul challenged the Corinthians to value love above all gifts, abilities, and virtues. Think, consider love for God and others to be the motivation for your attitudes and actions. And do. Demonstrate love in your attitudes and actions toward God and others. Now, remember in the last lex in the last lesson when we talked about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about spiritual gifts, the Corinthians were using them, but they missed one thing while doing so, and that was love. As you can see here, it's a noun, which means an intense feeling of deep affection. But we're just not going to talk about general love. We're going to talk more specifically about God's love and how we can share with others. Once again, in chapter 12, we talked about spiritual gifts, but now we're talking about love and how that needs to be used in the spiritual gifts. Value love above all gifts, abilities, and virtues. Here we have... 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3. And here's the thing. If the Corinthians were, were using all the spiritual gifts without love, it's pretty much meaningless. If they did everything right, but without love, it would be worth for nothing. And in these verses, Paul listed five specific gifts. He listed tongues, Prophecy, knowledge, faith, and the gift of giving to others. That there, there we go. Each of these gifts, as, as desired as they may be, are useless without love. The only way spiritual gifts can be used genuinely or creatively is when love is the primary motivation. So we talked about tongues, right? Tongues is mentioned here first because of the Corinthians infatuation and excessive, excessive emphasis on this gift, as you can see in verse one. Scholars reference the fact that eloquent speech was a greatly admired trait in the first century, especially in the Corinthian congregation. This could be why tongues was such a sought after gift among, among them. The tongues of angels is believed by many to be hyperbole, on Paul's part, even if there were a heavenly language, and I spoke it, but did so without love, it would mean nothing. Excuse me, the apostle would say. 
The sounding brass and clinging cymbals, as you see in verse 1, were musical instruments used in mystery religions of, of the first century. The idea behind these instruments was the notion that they could be momentarily electrifying, but the sound would vanish just as quickly. Further, their use of the gift of tongues without love would be no different than the worship of the first century pagans. The gift of prophecy, one that Paul encouraged the Corinthians to seek after, as you can see in verse 2, would also be useless without love. Further, without love, all spiritual knowledge and even faith that is strong enough to move mountains means nothing. And in verse 3, it indicates that all self-denial, even to the point of death for a cause, meant nothing without love. So once again, speaking in tongues and prophecy, and also the gifts of knowledge, faith, and giving, if you did all those without love, it would mean nothing. Let's move on. Love is demonstrated by attitudes and actions. And here we have 1 Corinthians verse, chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Beginning in verse 4, Paul described the characteristics of love and made it very personal. In fact, these attributes are richly relational and focus on the well-being of others. Consider first that love is patient. By definition, patience is the capacity to be wronged and not seek retaliation. This was not the normal response of the Corinthian church at the time. The tendency of the Corinthians and often and often with us believers today, unfortunately, is to be impatient with those that need patience the most. That's something that I struggle with. I'm one of the least patient people on this planet, but I'm getting better at it, I have to admit. <laughs> but check this out. Love is also kind. I'll say that again. Love is also kind and that it responds in kindness towards all, even those who, who wish to do harm. Kindness is a virtue that is often overlooked, yet is greatly needed, especially within the body of Christ. And speaking of patience, I learned from my father that patience is the most important virtue of life. Envy and boasting also mentioned in verse four. Once again, envy and boasting seem to refer back to the Corinthians' use of spiritual gifts and portray opposite ends of the same pole. These immature believers were often guilty of envy, jealousy over the gifts of others, or were guilty of boasting of their own gifts. So once again, envy and boast. The fact that someone else may be in the spotlight or receive accolades and recognition caused jealousy among the immature believers. The Greek word for puffed up or arrogant is a word used by Paul, and you can find it various times in 1 Corinthians. Apparently, these were attitudes, attitudes shamefully exhibited by these immature believers. Love, however, does not behave in such a way. As you can see here in this picture, Paul continued his summary of what genuine love looks like in verse 5. Love is not rude, or as it says here, does not dishonor others. Regardless of the fact that the Corinthians often displayed rudeness towards those that held opposing views, the person motivated by love is not rude and does not merely look out for him or herself, nor is he or she irritable and resentful. Or as we can see here, self-seeking, not easily, not easily angered, or of course, keeps no records of wrongs. We also learn we also learn from verse 6 that love does not delight in evil, but instead rejoices in the truth. Once again, does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. For a con for a congregation dealing with issues such as incest back in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, both of these characteristics were important. Love also protects trusts, hopes, and perseveres, as you can see right here in verse 7. 
The word for truth refers to the gospel message and stands in contrast to unrighteousness. But bearing all these things in verse 7 speaks of enduring difficulties or difficult people. And this was a term that spoke of holding fast like a watertight vessel. In this way, the follower of Christ, motivated by love, refrains from giving vent to selfishness in the midst of adversity that would tend to lead to such venting. And believes in all things or trust does not portray a gullible spirit, but instead portrays a positive attitude towards others, especially fellow believers. Behind this expression is an aptitude to believe well of others when there is no evidence to the contrary. Love keeps us from having an automatic skepticism towards fellow believers. Such, such skepticism harms the body of believers rather than building it up. Contrary to popular belief, giving others the benefit of the doubt is not an absence of wisdom. Hope, hopes, hope in all things speaks of one that does not despair, but instead sees the bright side of things, especially as it relates to fellow believers. Endures all things or perseveres speaks of endurance amid hardships and persecutions, especially in terms of our relationships and possibly even our friendships. In summary, love isn't a suppression of self. Rather, it is an expression of trust, love, and perseverance. When this type of love is exhibited, it reflects the love of Christ, positively affects the body and gives a positive portrayal of the church to an unbelieving world. Last part, love will never end. Oh yeah, and the previous section was um, about love and attitudes and how we can show it through our attitudes and actions. This one now is about how love will never end. Pretty much, in other words, it means that love is eternal. So here's verses eight through 13. In the Corinthian church, some of the members emphasized the manifestation of spiritual gifts. Paul's point was, was that these gifts, such as, such as prophecies, tongues, and knowledge. There we go. Let me move myself over here. There we go. Now, all these things pretty much would one day no longer be necessary. However, love, love on the other hand, will always be necessary and is a true sign of a follower of Christ. While we are in this world, spiritual gifts play a role. They help us because we are like children and don't have the complete understanding we will have in eternity. Paul illustrated this point when he compared the understanding and actions of a child to those of an adult as you can see here in verse 11. He demonstrated this with a threefold summary of speaking, thinking, and reasoning, a summary that is likely parallel to the three gifts mentioned in verse eight, prophecies, tongues, and knowledge. While certain behaviors are appropriate for children, that type of behavior ceased when the child grew up. With the coming of adulthood, such gifts, the very ones that the Corinthians were fighting about, would become obsolete although Paul did not state specifically when, the, when that time would be. Now, the reference to the mirror, or as he says here, reflection as in a mirror, in verse 12, would have resonated with the Corinthians as Corinth was famous for its bronze mirrors. Those mirrors were typically made of polished brass or other such metals. The reflection seen in them, however, was an imperfect and distorted image, as you can see in the picture. It is this analogy that Paul used to illustrate the partial reflection of the present that would one day give way to the splendor of perfect vision in which Paul and all believers would see God. The partial knowledge will then be replaced with a perfect knowledge of God. Our understanding will then be complete and we will no longer need the assistance of training of spiritual gifts. Paul referred to a triad of gifts that were short-lived, prophecy, knowledge, and tongues, but in verse 13, he commended a triad of gifts that, that would always remain. Faith, hope, and love. Once again, faith, hope, and love. In summary, the three things we have now that will remain throughout eternity are faith, hope, and love. 
Of these three, however, love is the greatest. Once again, faith, hope, and love. Of all these, faith, love, sorry, love is the greatest. And it is both eternal and reflective of the nature of God. Can you believe that? Now, let's go to our apply section today. Make love for God and others your priority. Let me ask you these, let me ask you these couple questions. What are some practical outcomes of making love for God and others your priority? And why is love so important to our use of spiritual gifts and service within the church? Let me tell you this. Bob Goff, in his best-selling book, Love Does, gives a simple statement on what Christians should do. He says, love God, love people, do stuff. While this is very simplistic, it helps to remind us that God, that, to remind us that that God, who is very loving and caring for us, towards us, is best expressed by loving people and by doing stuff that helps them know that they are loved by us and by our God. Of all the responses that can be given in, in any situation, choo choosing, the, choosing the loving one is sometimes the last one that we think of. Moving love to the beginning of the line of our thinking takes effort and reminders that we are to treat people the way God treats us. Sometimes the most loving response is to tell someone the truth and to let him or her experience love that is honest without being condemning. Love should be the priority in our relationships with God and with others. And with that, I want to show you your sheet for this week. It's called Love First. And here's what it says in your sheets, which I want you to write about this week. How can I make love for God and others my priority when I disagree with my parents? I have been wronged by a friend or family member. I see a friend making dangerous or unwise choices. I'm browsing the internet on my phone. And lastly, when I see someone sitting alone at lunch, or in this case, if you see someone out in the streets who is hungry and thirsty, I want you to fill out a sheet with those questions this week and share them with me before our next lesson. And now to end our lesson, we're going to respond. Love your enemies. Whew. If we are honest, the truths about love can be difficult. Paul described it as a pure expression of the work God is doing in our hearts. And yet, unfortunately, it is not always easy to love others. Let me ask you, can you think of someone who is difficult to love in your life? Now I want you to consider the type of love required to pray for this person. And are you willing to demonstrate love by simply praying for that person this week? I can tell you from experience, one time, I thought I could never forgive a person, but as time went by, I just had to do it. And a big weight came off my shoulders, and I really felt God's love in my heart. So I know if I can do it, then you can do it. So I challenge you this week to pray not only for that one person, but also that your own hearts would be changed towards that person. And now, eternal investment. If you had $2,000 to invest, where would you put the money? A man named Asa Candler put up $2,300 to buy a recipe touted as a headache remedy from a pharmacist in Atlanta. Three decades later, he sold the company Coca-Cola for $25 million. Man, can you believe that? It would be fun to be one of the people who were able to invest in such a way that their families would benefit for years to come. However, this is exactly what the power of love is able to do in a family, even yours. Love never fails. Coca-Cola will not be produced in heaven, unfortunately. But love, 
will never end. I want to encourage you guys to work on your internal eternal investment today. How can you show God's love more clearly to the people who know today? Let's have our word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for helping us to learn about how, how we need to use love in everything that we do, not just in our own personal lives, but also with our spiritual gifts, Lord. Lord, help us to show your love to others in everything that we do. We thank you and love you, Lord. Amen. Well, that concludes our lesson for this week. Tune in next week as we discuss about the nativity. When, when Christ came down as a baby and was born on Christmas Day. I'll see you guys next week and have a Merry Christmas next weekend. I'll see you guys.